just need to take my breath. I didn't know the caliber of people I was talking with. Um, the magnitude is great. Um, it's an honour to be standing here. Firstly, I want to recognise the traditional owners of this beautiful land and their ancestors. I want to recognise the old people who are our past and present. I want to recognise the young people who are our next generation and future. I want to recognise distinguished guests and special visitors, with special guests. My thanks is to the Yotha Yindi Foundation for having me and the Children's Ground team attend this Gama Festival. This year, Gama is about telling or truth telling. I will share some of my truths. My key message today is, is this. Don't keep creating a foundation for our children that is fragmented and fractured. But create a foundation that is solid and is grounded in the depth of our heritage, our spirituality, our culture, language and identity. This was all is, a, is as opposed to what the status quo is today. It's the tired, worn out, tried and tested, forced and failed policies of assimilation and yesteryear. A system designed by colonization to disempower us, to fracture us and to fragment our families to all points of the compass. A system designed to take away and whittle away at everything that we held close and defi that defined us as a people. A system designed to favour the oppressor and to keep the oppressed down and dependent on the meagre rations and handouts. A system designed to divide, divide us, giving preference and voice to some and not to others. It is up to all of us to think seriously about what we are doing, why we are doing it, and how we are doing it. Our kids don't need to be fixed. Our kids need to need our kids need to grow up as Aboriginal children with rights and opportunities like everyone else, with a voice and the ability to control their own destination. I am a mixed match. I'm a creation, I've been created by others who decided that what they knew for me was the best. I'm a product of assimilation I'm a product of being denied my identity, my family, my country, my culture, and my language. In the West, I'm a success. I was the kid who came good, became a model working citizen, living in my own home, paying my rent in advance, hiding my identity and keeping my relatives at, at a distance. What you see today you might think is acceptable, but to me it's not. Why? Because I spent a lifetime along with my brothers and sisters, or sister, trying to rebuild and recapture all that was stolen and denied us. 
The tragedy of all that is that not one Aboriginal person in Australia escaped the policies of assimilation. And the assimilation is and then still in the mindset of decision makers today. Assimilation is just a heartbeat away from everything we aspire to achieve as a people. I have a good command of English, but I cannot speak my own language. I have grandchildren, but I was denied my mother and father. Sometimes I don't know where I belong or where we're going or who the hell am I? That's the question that assimilation leaves you. Who am I? Coming here was hard. Coming back up north, I was stolen and taken to Croker Island. Minjalung, and its people in that place holds some of my fondest memories as a child. Very similar country. There were heaps of nature, but very little nurture. Notwithstanding the efforts of the cottage mothers, who had to spread their love over 12 or so different distraught children each, each. Leaving Alice Springs, and Sean can tell you how reluctant I was to come, uh, leaving Alice Springs was hard because I still cling onto my home. I was taken away and I find it very hard to leave. I am the sum of my experiences, and my experiences are such that my life doesn't have the cultural integrity and the grounding that it should have. I am not recognised in native title. I am not recognised in the land rights. When my father's traditional lands were handed, given back, my brother and I were not even notified of the ceremonial handback um, that happened. The apology meant nothing to me. There are too many sorries and not enough truths. I get a chance to speak here because I have made English my, my language and my friend and people feel comfortable with that. What does it mean to have a voice if that voice is not really heard or understood? We are talking about constitutional change, recognition in white society, legislative change that has to happen. The Uluru Statement from the Heart is the collective statement from our people across nations. There should be no debate. What has been asked for is very clear. These days my energy is on lifting the voice of others and the governance at grassroots level, where the answers lie. I am currently the chair of Children's Ground and we see what we can do what can happen when you are culturally empowered? A whole community, family, kids are mobilised into taking ownership and control and being part of their own destiny. Their participation guarantees success. Our children's grandkids want to be, edu be in education and families are walking and working alongside them. Hope comes to the service, uh, surface and talents shine. People are no longer afraid of being shut down or shunned. People are excited about their future, what their future might hold and their power in making this a reality. Our principles at Children's Ground are that local people must design, deliver, govern and evaluate not some imported American solution based on forced assimilation 
we never needed that and prescribed solutions do not work. As I said yesterday, we do not want to see our children in jails, hospitals, homeless or in cemeteries. The status quo is simply denying them their fundamental rights. It is creating and embedding trauma. Doing it our way has never been allowed to flourish. If we allow the space, we will, if, we, if you allow us the space, we will not only rebuild our communities, we will rebuild our nations. Because it will only be when we, our nations embrace first, when our nation embrace First Nations people, history and knowledge, people's histories and knowledges, that we can grow as a country. This is basically, this is about basic dignity and respect. Constitutional change alone cannot achieve that. But it's also about how the government chooses to treat the sovereign people of these lands. For those of you in power and in government and in many corporations who are here today, you have all benefited from the theft of these lands. I'm inviting you to partner on our terms. We need you. We are struggling at the margins and we need you to bring along a long-term support in a way that is meaningful to the families and the communities, not just to your business or your political status. If you have power and hold a position of influence, make, when you make your decision about our lives, ask yourselves this. Will your decision or policy or law, or law empower and bring dignity to our next generations? Not just for our children, but for all children, regardless of where you live and what community and, what, and the land that you belong to? Or will your decision just enforce the status quo? I say to you today, be accountable and just be bold. We have our voices and we want to be heard. Thank you.